All right, I'm going to show you how to create uh, question banks in your Canvas class. So the first thing you're going to want to do, this is the home screen. You're going to want to go to Quizzes. And then that's going to load forever. There we go. Over here, these three dots. Maybe you call it a snowman or not. Then quick Manage Question Banks. And then you're going to want to right here quick click add question bank give it a name test bank and then click on the name and now you can add questions so all i'm going to do here is just kind of add some answers some some questions one thing that you're going to want to do well one thing that you could choose to do you don't have to do this is if you're worried about academic dishonesty if people are um, copying questions from memory or um, allowing people to see their screen um, you know like screen sharing uh, or on the phone with somebody else who's taking the exam, what you might want to do is make a couple questions that look visually similar. Like that. This works a little bit better, you know, when it's actually content, because I I wouldn't 100% feel right about just throwing a knot in there. Usually I capitalize these so students can see that I'm saying not and they don't just pass over it. But let's say that you had something similar to um, This, the frontal lobe is where decisions are processed. We'll say true, false, and sometimes. And then maybe you want to throw one in that you wouldn't feel like you were deliberately tricking people because if they knew the material, they wouldn't get this wrong. You would say the occipital lobe. is where decisions are processed. And then, same thing. True, false, and sometimes. So that way, if you're doing screen share, you see this decisions are processed, and you're not actually thinking about the question or you didn't study, you might just go along with what the other person saw. If the student is actually engaged with the content and learned from it, they're going to know that the occipital lobe is not where decisions are processed. Okay, so then what we're going to want to do is, well, we're done. We're done with our bank for now. So we're going to go to back to quizzes. If you're making a totally new exam, you know, just click Add Quiz. Um, if you're adding it to an existing exam, you can click on the exam and then add this question bank in. I'm gonna make a new one so that I can delete it before I actually you know put it into this class. So what you'll do is you'll cl click on new question group. We're gonna name this as test group. Um, and then we're gonna I had four questions in my bank. I'm gonna tell it to pick two questions. And then here I'm going to tell it how many points each question is worth, which I'm going to say is three. So if you have four questions and you tell it to pick two, it's going to randomly select two questions for every student. And what this means is uh, every student gets two random questions, which means there should be quite a few different exams. Uh, let's see, you've got 
One, two, three, four, five, six different ways that you can randomize uh, two out of four questions. So six, you know, six students at random should each have a different grouping of two questions, uh, assuming that it's totally randomized the correct way. Then if you do these question banks throughout the rest of your exam, it's extremely unlikely that any one student is going to get exactly the same exam as anybody else in the class. The more questions you have in your question bank, the less likely it is that they're going to get the exact same exam. If you have questions that look similar, like we talked about earlier, then it's going to be even harder for them. <coughs> excuse me, even harder for them to um, copy off of somebody else in the class. So pick two questions. You can assign how many points you want. You could do one. You could do half credit. You could do three points, whatever. And then you're going to want to link to a question bank. Then you're going to go through all the question banks you have and click on the question bank. The, aha, there we go, test bank. Then you're going to click Select Bank and Create Group. Now these questions will be pulled from Test Bank. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click Save. And now we have an exam. Let's preview this exam. So here we have, is this a test question? Yes. And the occipital lobe is where decisions are processed. I actually think I didn't change the answer on that one, so it's probably still set up as true. Yeah. <laughs> That's incorrect. Don't, <clears throat> don't use this video as uh, learning about the brain. Um, but that's how you set up these um, test banks. In a quiz, you can, you can have as many test banks as you want. One of the best things that you're probably going to want to do is have a different bank for each concept in your class. That way, every student is tested over every concept. Um, and then... And then, then you're good. Just give it to your students as usual, and you can allow them to um, take the exam in any normal way. Really quickly, I'm just going to go through some other things you want to do when you make a quiz. You're going to want to shuffle the answers. You're going to want to set a time limit because you don't want them to be able to have this open all day. Uh, don't allow multiple attempts unless for some reason, you know, you want to. If it's an exam, probably don't do that. Don't let them see their quiz responses. This is how our answers end up on the internet. And then you should also show it one question at a time and lock the questions after answering. This prevents students from backtracking. One of the problems with backtracking is if they are cheating with another student, they can jump around in their questions until they get in the same order as the other students so they can kind of answer along with the person that they're cheating off of so to avoid that this is one of the ways that we're doing uh, one of the things we're doing i should say um this sometimes is problematic for students so if you tell them about this before they take the exam, it is less of an issue. If you surprise them with not being able to go back, even though Canvas tells them that they can't go back, I don't think everybody reads that uh, message that comes up, so it can ruin their the way that they take you know, exams if they're used to answering the ones that they're good with and then going back. Um, so they might accidentally perform very poorly. So you want to let them know ahead of time. I would suggest putting an announcement um, up and then also writing it in the instructions.
like that. And then similarly make an announcement. Uh, then you can save all of these preferences and your quiz is ready to go. Um, so there you go.